Madame Askew here, and I'm so delighted that you are joining us for Friday evening tea. I think it's going to be a grand time. It's our first time doing this, and I'm so excited. I'm still learning a few technical things because, as we all know, technology is not my forte. Um, and I'm so happy. Uh, now, it's tea time for us, but when I was in Scotland, I learned that this is actually properly known as gin hour, at least amongst our friends in Edinburgh. And so if you'd like to open up your bottle of gin and have a cocktail, that's perfectly reasonable also. So the Grand Arbiter is joining us in the comments, and if you have any questions, you may certainly ask him. I'm going to be answering a few questions that we got on our Facebook page. Um, this previous week we asked everyone to let us know if they had any questions about tea. Hello, it's the Lemon Pirate. She's here and here is the Grand Arbiter to keep her company. I'm so delighted. So tonight I'm having this beautiful um, Tai Kuan Yin tea it's called the iron goddess and it comes from our favorite tea people the tea punks hello darlings it's quite good it's an auspicious tea and so i'm having it in honor of the um lunar new year which just happened to pass at the end of january on the 28th i was very delighted that i got to celebrate new year twice this year because I was out traveling on the mighty seas over our western New Year and um, so it's been very lovely to get to celebrate it here in town again with friends. We had a lovely tea at one of my favorite tea shops, Seven Cups Teas. Now, Seven Cups is a Chinese tea house. It's beautiful. If you're ever in Tucson, you must let me know so we can go to tea at Seven Cups. Um, I did have some Taiwan Yin at Seven Cups when I visited, and it has the most lovely golden color. Gold is sort of part of the celebrations of Lunar New Year, I understand. Now, it's not my native tradition, so I cannot claim to be an expert, but I was delighted to learn more about it this year. And I'd love hearing from any of you if you know something about Lunar New Year. So, um, one of our questions was, what is your favorite tea or the best tea you've ever had to drink? And that is a very difficult question to answer because I love them all, really. And the Grand Arbiter and I um, drink a great deal of tea obviously and so we've had many a very fine cup of tea but I'm quite fond of this particular tea I'm going to show it to you here so you can all see the beautiful golden hue of the liqueur as it's called I love that when I'm drinking tea I'm drinking liqueur um, and when I'm drinking liqueur I'm also drinking liqueur it sort of satisfy, satisfies a certain symmetry in my life especially when indulging in tea at the gin hour so I too am having an evening cocktail it's just very warm and golden tea so I do find this delightful it's um, got a sort of grassy, grainy quality to it. It should not be over steeped. That's a really good plan of attack with any tea. Um, but the tea punks find the most glorious things. And so I'm very happy with this uh, Tai Guan Yin. It's an oolong. So that's rather like the best tea you can get in the Chinese tradition, or at least some people feel that way. Oolongs are quite special. I'm very fond of pu'ers, as anyone who's gone to um, tea with me at Seven Cups knows. Yes, hooray for the tipple. Thank you, Madam Evie. I'm very fond of tipples, too, in my tea. But tonight I'm just having it straight up. Although I have it on good authority that this particular oolong goes quite well with whiskey. So if you're looking for something to pair with your whiskey, this might be the one to do. So... Um, but in terms of the pu'ers, there's this quite fine pu'er that was put away in 1995. 
um, that they serve occasionally at Seven Cups again. And I love that one. It is tremendous. It's like a special occasion tea, though, um, because it's rare and spendy. So my normal pu'er there is uh, the Magoto, which is a beautiful fermented tea in the brick form. Very black, very robust, very earthy. So I love that. Of course, Darjeeling is in fact what I'm powered by. Now, the Grand Arbiter and I both like Darjeeling, but he is a fan of Constant Comment. I believe that's his favorite. He'll have to speak to that. Um, but I am very fond of the second flush Darjeeling, and, um, well, of course, F Brand has a special place in my heart. But I was so fortunate to have some tea sent to me by my Aunt Sheila, from Darjeeling in India, directly from the tea plantation, and um, it was exquisite. It was probably the uh, best Darjeeling I've ever had. It was so fresh, so potent. It had the most breathtaking aroma, um, just nutty and warm and delightful. Um, and so I, I love that Darjeeling and I, I divvy it out very carefully for myself and if you're over for a special occasion that's likely what I'll serve you until it's completely gone. As far as green teas, I don't drink them very often, I'm more of a black tea drinker, but uh, I've got a fondness for jasmine scented greens um, and of course we all love the gunpowder green. That's what we tend to bring out for tea duels. Um, I get a very fine gunpowder green from a local tea house called Scented Leaf, and it packs quite the punch. It's very strong. Gunpowder green tea is known for being a rather potent tea, but also it's named gunpowder because the tea is manipulated into these little pellets, rather like shot um, from you know, bullets and things, projectiles, so it's not actually infused with gunpowder, despite our, you know, insistence. And no matter how many interns we lose, I promise you, there's no actual gunpowder in our own special blend. We use other things. They're proprietary and we may not speak of them, and also we're being audited again by some agency without a name. They never tell us who they are. They just show up and tell us they have concerns about our gunpowder green tea. So, <laughs> hello, there's a lady with lemon. Oh, Lady Grey with lemon, yes. I love that too. That's a wonderful tea. Um, I, I like it a little bit more than Earl Grey, actually. I think I like the citrus balance more than that one. And also, I'm very fond of the Earl Grey Cream, or as we like to call it, Earl Grey Crack, because it is one of the most popular teas we ever serve. If we come to any event and don't have a little Earl Grey key, uh, Cream put to the side, there are tears and lamentations and beatings of chess, and we are taken aside um, by at least one person to tell us how deeply disappointed they are by the lack of Earl Grey cream. Now, Earl Grey cream has a little bit of lemon and corn flour. No, not lemon. It's um, corn flour and vanilla in it that makes it so sweet and mild, and it rather cuts the flavor of the bergamot, which is, I think, why people enjoy it so much. It's because the bergamot is there, but it's not so forward and scandalous with the Earl Grey cream. It's more, you know, um, shall we say demure. So those are our rather our favorite teas, I think. And in terms of tea sains, the herbal concoctions, the Grand Arbiter and I did have a little discussion about that. It was difficult discussion because, you know, we really Neither of us have bonded very closely with tea sayings, but 
We found one from our friends at Tipong Tees, and it is the Red Sands. It is this Ruibos. I think that's how you say it. If it's not, it's how I'm saying it today, and I'll correct my pronunciation another time. But it is actually quite good, and you're going to notice a theme. It's earthy. I love earthy teas, and it has a warm quality to it, very rich, very full-bodied and a bit nutty. When we served it last year at Wild Wild West Con for the tea duels, we ran out. It was so popular. It is by far the most popular tea sane that we have ever served. People loved it. They drank it up. We had to find a secondary tea sane until we could go back to the tea punks and throw ourselves on their mercy and ask them for more. Fortunately, they were there at Wild West Con, so they could be our tea providers for the weekend, which was very convenient. So, but I highly recommend it. And you can get these teas on their website. Um, a quick Google search will draw it right up. They're the only tea punk teas in town or in the universe or on this particular terra firma currently. There might be another organization in some alternate timeline, but they're the only ones we know. Good afternoon, my darling. Hello, I'm so glad you could join us. I'm so happy to see everyone's faces. Thank you, madam. You, you are lovely. I'm so happy to see you, Robin, the delightful um, mother of our grand arbiter. It's very good to have your company. So um, the other question we were asked was how to provide tea, a royalty, and to prepare food for a royalty and what the etiquette might be there. Now, I actually did a little research, a little reading, because the Grand Arbiter and I are known to provide um, tea for notable individuals. We have served tea to Professor Elemental, which was grand, I have to say. And we were so fortunate as to provide tea and do tea dueling with steampunk Boba Fett, who is the most charming creature. And we've even had tea with Kato herself, who's a lovely human, and knows her teas, I might say. Um, and, and last fall, the Grand Arbiter and I positively fell in love with Madame Gail Carriger, to whom we had the privilege, nay honour, to serve tea and to discuss various cuppa. Um, she is a big fan of Assam, and I was very delighted that I could provide her something other than Darjeeling, which she does not care for, it turns out. That's all right. Assam is a splendid tea. I like it as well. And so we have had some experience providing tea to notable individuals, but never a proper king or queen of any um, country that we know of. They might have been in disguise and not telling us. We don't, you know, we don't push on that front. If people want to be incognito, we understand. But, so oh, good afternoon, Scott. How lovely to see you. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, the main thing, and the Grand Arbiter and I did have deep conversation on this point, the main thing when providing tea for a royal tea is to understand the culture and the traditions of the royal court for which you are providing tea. A little research goes a long way and also a willingness to ask questions in advance. It's never wrong to ask someone how they prefer their tea and to apologize if you are not quite prepared or you didn't quite know and to do better in the future. In fact, I find that in life that is true of many things. If you don't know the answer, if you aren't certain how to best make someone feel at home or welcome at your tea table, to ask them a few questions. What they like, where they're from, what their favorite biscuit is. Do they even take biscuits with their tea? For instance, were we to do tea for the Emperor of Japan, which would be remarkable and quite an honor, and I would do my best to actually be slightly serious under those circumstances. Um, we would hire someone to facilitate the proper 
ceremony around the preparation for green tea because the Grand Arbiter and I are neither of us masters of green tea and we would wish to give best honor to the Emperor. Now we might be able to throw ourselves upon the mercy of Margie, no last name. She has some experience with these things also, but it's it would be perfectly lovely to have a master there and to watch them facilitate the ceremony and to prepare the tea properly. For the Queen of England, it is actually a bit more simple to prepare tea for her. One merely needs to make sure that the traditional fare, not too fussy, is provide. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II... Am I sideways? I apologise if I'm sideways. Um... Am I sideways for everyone? Am I entirely askew? I'm going to wait and see. And if I am, I'll try and rectify it. But it's a learning experience here in my... Um... Oh, good. Scott can turn. Thank you, Sheila. Oh, good. I'm glad that technical people are here to answer those questions. Because I apologize for being sideways and I cannot come through the screen and fix it for you. So, if you're preparing tea for the Queen of England, she likes simple fare. Um, I understand um, she... Uh, I'm 90 degrees, that's delightful. She likes um, traditional cucumber sandwiches and scones and the like. So, the trick is to make a very nice repast for her to provide a good tea. Now, she has a special blend that she gets for her own teas created by Twinings, it would be possible to get a lovely blend of Darjeeling and Assam for the Queen, and I'm sure that would be perfectly appropriate. Um, and then, once the Queen is with you, you must follow etiquette, of course. Do not sit until she's seated herself. Do not eat until she's eaten. Do not drink your tea until she's had hers. Once she's commenced, you too may participate. And then when she is done, you're done too, whether you're done or not. You must stop once the queen finishes her tea and once she stops eating. There's no more eating for you. And so you are advised to make certain that you are not ravenous when you go to tea with Her Majesty the Queen of England. I don't know if the Emperor of Japan is more relaxed in this regard, but food is not necessarily um, part of the green tea presentation in the Japanese tea ceremony. Now, if one is having Chinese tea, I recommend going to Seven Cups and learning from our own local tea master, who is really a lovely woman and so knowledgeable. She does a regular tea ceremony there for Chinese tea with oolong and it is wonderful and very informative. Now that is usually not accompanied by food but they do have some delightful tiffin that you could have with that tea that's mild, delicious but will not detract from the flavors of your tea. So that's another thing to consider the harmonious pairings of food with tea when presenting tea to royalty. You obviously want to be on your best foot. So another question we were asked was, um, oh, askew as always, yes I am, I can't help myself. I mean, I could try and rectify it, but I don't think I would succeed. So thank you all for bearing with me being terribly askew. So um, another question we were asked by our delightful friend Dawn, who has moved off to the far west to Washingtonia near Seattle, near our dear Grand Arbiter. Um, dear Don asked us about the quantities that might be preferred to serve, the sizes, the types of food at tea. So if one is doing English tea, which the Grand Arbiter and I are notably associated with English tea, I can't imagine why that is the case. But if you are serving English tea, then one should make certain that your nibbles, with a B, by the way, your nibbles, are um, finger-sized, not too large, 
so that you don't need a fork and knife and all manner of accoutrement to cut into your food. Your finger sandwiches should actually be able to be picked up with your fingers and eaten in one or two delicate bites. Your scones should be able to be broken in half with your fingers. You might um, need some sort of an implement to put on your cream and your jam. And with the, the dainty sweets, you might use a fork to eat those, but many of them should also be um, able to be picked up and eaten delicately with your fingers, and that's quite all right. Now, you know, be careful when you're eating. You don't want to have crumbs everywhere. You don't want explosions of cucumbers. Oh, that's terrible. And remind... Oh, I'm now frozen. Oh, um... That's strange, a right white circle going next to my eye. Well, I apologize. I don't know if that's a technical problem, and hopefully it will, you know, pass. So I apologize. Um, so that might be something with the ether webs, which is beyond my capability to address. Uh, but, so, with the quantity, tea should be filling, satisfying, but not something at which you're going to gorge yourself. So you want to make sure that you have a moderate portion for everyone you're expecting, enough that they'll be satisfied but not overwhelmed. Traditionally, um, I've seen at least a scone available for every guest, sometimes two, and um, depending on the size, that also is important. So. To make your best judgment. If people are coming to tea who have been laboring all day on an airship, you might want rather more finger sandwiches. If they have been eating at a banquet all morning before tea, you probably only need a cream tea, which is a scone and a little jam and a little cream. And oh, it was one of my favorite things, actually. And should you find yourself in San Diego ever, you can have the most delightful cream tea at Shakespeare's Corner, which is a beautiful little tea house run by a wonderful woman from England. Her name is Sheila. You can tell her I sent you. She never remembers my name, but I always remember her, and she is just the most delightful. Do you know who she does remember, though? I wonder if you can guess. He's green. He's verbose. He's large and in charge, yes. She always remembers my friend, Godzilla. Whenever we come to tea, she remembers him before she remembers me, which is all right because he's so charming. And, and he's very happy to be here having tea with all of you today. So do you have any more questions for us about tea before we move on to a last few um, points of discussion before we wrap up our tea today? and send you on your way for a lovely Friday evening. Um, I'm glad I'm working again. Where is Cake? Oh, June, I don't know where Cake is. He was walking back and forth behind me, and, oh, oh, I see him. Oh, wait, wait, look, he's... He's sleeping on the couch behind me. That's where he is, yeah. <laughs> so he's being very calm he's very delighted that I am um, here on the couch where he can get to me so they are called teaspoons that's an excellent question Delaney um, Delaney I just mangled your name I apologize so not too big not too small this is my teaspoon it was a gift from a dear friend and it says tea now gin later so even though it's gin hour we're waiting right so it's not too big it's a proper teaspoon um, so a lot of flatware sets silver sets will come with one that's called a teaspoon and actually in cooking you can use it like a teaspoon um, not if you're doing anything very serious like baking because that's mathematical and scientific but for regular cooking a teaspoon will actually suffice. 
So you can see, not too big, um, not a soup spoon. It's not like an iced tea spoon, however, which has a smaller cup, a smaller bowl, and a very long handle. So just enough so that you can get it into your teacup. Um, like so without banging the sides and in fact that's an important thing you just want to stir very delicately no side banging back and forth it's efficient and so you know that's the size you're looking for I hope that helped I hope that answered your question it was a good one and it's one I haven't been asked before so um, that's my best answer right now I can do some research if you need me to now this is our first week doing this. We've had a wonderful time. The Grand Arbiter and I have been talking about doing this for a long time uh, because we love all of you and we only get to see you usually at conventions, um, which is not nearly enough time. And so frequently there are questions that get asked during our tea dueling or our panels and we aren't always able to ask all of them or we make good intentions to see you all in between and we get caught up in some other activity like you know finding tea or eating or collapsing in a corner under the burden of our headgear or whatever craziness we're up to um, but we rarely get to actually sit down and talk so we thought this would be so lovely as an opportunity each week to have a little chance to converse with all of you, answer your questions, hear what you're up to and encourage you to drink more tea because that's always a good thing. So next week, Grand Arbiter will be the face in front of the camera. Um, he'll be coming to you from Seattle, his wonderful um, abode there in the far off reaches, not, not far from his widow's watch, by the way. So we're all going to be grateful to bring him out of the cold from his widow watch where he wanders by himself, longing for people. You know, it's dreadful. He's been, you know, left out there so much. So I'm glad we'll have him indoors. I'll be in the comments answering questions next week. And we will continue in that vein, alternating weeks. So you'll get some time with each of us going through the year. And then when we're at conventions together, we'll come to you live from our convention on Fridays, um, which might be with some guests, we hope. We hope very much. Um, and I hope to have some guests here in Tucson periodically to answer some questions that I might not be able to. Also, we will be seeing you in Tucson very, very soon. Yes, Evie will be joining me here and um, next week she'll be visiting. I'm so excited. Um, she's a dear friend. Well, I mean, she's a lemon pirate, but also despite stealing my lemon, she's a very dear friend. And I'm so happy she'll be visiting with me and Cake and keeping us in line and helping us prepare for Wild Wild West Steampunk Convention, which is coming up at the beginning of March. Um, that's March 3rd, 4th, and 5th. There are some opening ceremonies on March 2nd, right here in Tucson. And um, it's the Grand Arbiters and my home convention. We did our tea dueling there for the first time officially at a convention. We'd been tea dueling a bit here in Tucson before that um, for the Tucson Steampunk Society, but that was our first big convention tea duel. And so it's always been home to us, and we're very delighted each year to come back and to do more tea dueling. This year, I'm so excited, we will be tea dueling in the Aristocrats Lounge as usual, but we will also be tea dueling on the barn stage in the vendor barn, which means not on the Bitter Creek stage, so we will not be worried about the wind or needing people to raise their petticoats to protect biscuits as we have in the past. While charming and amusing, I fear some ankles have been exposed. And, you know, the Grand Arbiter and I are uncertain whether it was really cricket of us to ask the ladies and gentlemen to lift their petticoats and expose their ankles for everyone to see. It was scandalous, but needs must, right? So we'll be back there. We will also be do teapot racing once more. Splendid teapot racing, my latest favorite. Um, 
sport. It's a wonderful craze out of New Zealand. And we've had the pleasure of doing it at Gaslight and San Diego. And I had the very great pleasure of being one of the judges um, at the Grand Canadian Steampunk Expo um, in Niagara last fall for their teapot racing. And we did it last year at um, Wild West Con and we are back to do it again. Yes, and it is fantastic. We are going to have our splendid teapot race on Sunday on the Grand Saloon stage. That means there will be no dirt to mess with and no sand traps. Instead, all of the traps will be, you know, of our devising. So, and also the edge of the stage. Do be careful. Falling off that stage could be very dangerous for your teapot racer. We saw that at Phoenix Comic Con when we had the, you know, chasm of death there all around the stage. It was very dangerous, but um, fortunately no one lost any toes, so that was good. And we will also be doing a few panels at Wild West Con, which we always love to do. Um, and in the evening, we get to MC for Cirque Tibet doing their burlesque show that they are bringing to Wild West Con again this year. I am over the moon delighted. I love Cirque Tibet. If you have not had the opportunity to see them, please come join us. It is likely to be a midnight show, so you can go see our wonderful concerts at Wild West Con and then come join us for a little scandalous fun with Cirque du Bet. The Grand Arbiter and I promise to make ever so many jokes and to stumble about and talk about how wonderful they are. So I think that's all the news I have. Grand Arbiter, is there anything I'm forgetting today? They are wonderful, aren't they? I'm, I'm so excited to see them, Eve and Bear and Ash and Igor and Crocodile Tears and Celia and oh, the whole kit and caboodle, the whole lot of them, they're wonderful young people, so talented, so graceful in a way that I have never been in my entire existence and at 137 I assure you I am aware of my own um, abilities in the grace department. So, with that exhortation to join us at Wild West Con, to come see us tea duel there, to jump into the splendid teapot racing and to visit us during our panels, and most especially, to come spend one of those wonderful evening with us um, watching the delightful Cirque du Bet in their magical dancing and acrobatics and just... All of the wonder they bring to stage, it's amazing. And I, I know that um, it's going to be a monstrous good time. <laughs> See what I did there, maybe. So um, so do come join us for that. And oh, oh, Grand Arbiter, we haven't told them, have we? We are running for Monarchs this year at Wild West Con. I don't know if you all have heard, but there is um, an election at Wild West Con this year. Cthulhu is the front runner, I'm afraid. And we've decided that um, tea, flirtation, and civility all demand that we stand opposed to Cthulhu and return monarchy to the colonies. So watch out for our um, electoral materials, our our platform and other things. I hope you'll all vote for us. I know there are some other candidates and they are all lovely, wonderful people. A few of them may also be representing tea, but are they as flirtatious as we are? And do they have Godzilla on their side? I mean, he's, he's a very powerful inducement, I think, for our candidacy. So, yes, do come to Wild West Con. Do vote for us, or at least throw your vote in for one of those who are opposing Cthulhu. No, we don't want him. He's all tentacles and anger and ripping open the space-time continuum and it's terrible. 
and um, come see us at Tea Dueling and Teapot Racing. And in the meantime, have a wonderful Friday night. Thank you all for joining me. I look forward to speaking with you next week and throughout the week. Do stop by, visit the Madame Askew Facebook page. Um, we of the Temporal Entourage are always happy to catch up with you during the week. All right, have a lovely evening. Goodbye.